for us at Green Tea, um, and should be for every other farm, is the most important thing is the soil. Um, as I say, they're not making any more of it. We've got to look after what we've got. Um, anybody coming on the farm, you know, to explain soil is all different particles, different sizes, different textures. Um, add water to it and you get a different feel to soil but this is the starting point to growing as we've seen these are potatoes that we're trying to grow and, and at the end of the day any other crop. We're right on the edge of the fens going on to the Essex border so our countryside is um, going from flat to starting rolling on the hills. We're primarily um, chalk or sandy loam over chalk and some very thin chalk um, and soil erosion is quite high on our list of priorities when we're looking at which fields we have for potatoes. The cropping plan on the farm going forward um, is still to include sugar beet, peas and potatoes which are valuable crops within the mix of cereals giving us a varied um, or available varied treatment of chemicals so we're not getting a build up with any uh, resistance to any one, uh, one chemical. All cultivations on the farm are recorded within the gatekeeper system. Um, every operation is calculated as it, do we need to do the calculation. Over the past few years with the potato crop we've, we've cut out the plough and we go direct in with a subsoiler and this with our primary cultivation followed by the ridger um, which we ridge everything for the potato crop pre or late autumn so it's ready for the spring and can take the weather over winter. We touched on earlier about our cultivation practices here on the farm. Um, we moved over to what you might call a minimum cultivation, as far as minimum you can get with potatoes. It starts off really by having, you know, working closely with the, the farmer or the, you know, and the, or the contractor and having to work with the combine driver just to make sure if we're following the cereals that he leaves the stubble and nice and short and getting a nice even spread of straw across the field. Uh, then we come in with a uh, heavy machine we're doing our primary cultivations straight in with deep tines, discs on the front and a packer on the back and then we will follow with a ridging machine so everything is ridged up prior to Christmas. Um, you can see what we're trying also, um, we've sort of worked out and found out within the system, if it's chopped nicely, when we come back in in the autumn, in the spring I should say, um, re-ridge after the fertiliser as you can see, and then de-stone, we still get some of this straw into the bed, and hopefully this is going to hold some moisture for us as well when we're irrigating. Um, so we found a dual benefit. We've cut out probably a month's worth of ploughing across the unit, um, and a considerable lot of um, wearing metal and also diesel and most importantly time so uh, it has worked quite well for us. Chopping it very finely and you can see it here after the potatoes have been planted we've still got straw in the soil so therefore when we irrigate that hopefully will retain some of that moisture um, and hopefully reduce our, our water requirement um, which, is, which is positive for us. Uh, from a cost point of view and an environmental point of view. Being conventional and organic, our nutrient management plan um, is targeted um, basically towards the potato crop. With the organics, um, we'll look at bringing in manure. Um, this is put on prior to um, ridging the potatoes and incorporating it in within the soil so we can serve the nutrients directly with the potato crop of planting. On the conventional side, um, also we test prior to the potato crop, but in, on the whole farm we, um, we test the farm every four years with a combination of W patterns and using soil crest from Agri. Yeah, a few years ago um, on the farm we had a very wet um, season, I think it was in 12, and we'd applied all our base fertiliser on land that was destined for potatoes, and when it came round to the spring, um, we weren't able to plant the potatoes, it had to go into another crop, therefore we'd spent quite a considerable amount of money on the excess fertiliser for what that um, crop needed that was going in. So we, we looked around and um, we decided to move to a um, more of a liquid suspension fertiliser that can be applied, this has just been applied about 10 minutes ago, um, can be applied directly in front of our crop of potatoes so we can target it more so for what is actually going here, whether it be a main crop or a salad field, we can leave that decision right up until the last minute so then we can ma uh, manipulate what we want to put in that mix.
obviously here back in the farm office uh, where we collate all the information given to us for soils and fertiliser recommendations. We have a selection of maps on the wall, um, basically describing all the our ecological focus areas, HLS areas where we shouldn't spread nitrogen etc, spread risk zones um, and basically everything you can see where the farm covers, um, which is also handy on a small farm as well as being a big farm. Um, so it actually brings everything into one central point. Um, so anybody visiting, you know, we can say where, where they shouldn't go and where they can go. You know, from this seed that we, we have in uh, prior to Christmas um, and storing our cold stores, what we're trying to do is target all our inputs, manage our soils, um, apply all our water in a targeted manner to hopefully produce this, which is the end result, which is all destined for our um, supermarket customers.